Want to try 27 megahertz pedestrian mobile? Well, you've come to the right video. In it, I'll describe a portable antenna you can put on a backpack and work 27 megahertz pedestrian mobile. Not only that, but I'll do a range test, I'll demonstrate it on air, and even if you're not into 27 megahertz, you should watch this video anyway, because I'll give you some tips on a bit of software you can get that's really handy for range testing and other monitoring. Basically, my Wade Tenor DX, it's a vertical wire, about 5.8 metres. It's just supported on this fishing pole in a backpack and in another bag, which I have the battery and transceiver, is over the shoulder. So I'm carrying that with this one on my back. And with that, I can go pedestrian mobile. Then when I'm finished, I can put the smaller bag inside the larger bag and off I go. The 5.8 metre long wire is a bit over half a wavelength, but a bit under 5 eighth of a wavelength. Its length means that it's high impedance. That means that it needs an L-match antenna coupler. This is the one that I'm using from the Wade Tenor DX. It's very simple, just two parts, a variable capacitor and a one microhenry inductor. It's an L-match, which I'll show you the circuit in a moment. If you're only interested in 27, 28 megahertz, you don't need as much capacitance as I've used here. In fact, a lower amount of capacitance will make tuning and adjustment slightly easier. Having a look at the diagram for the antenna coupling unit, one microhenry inductor actually looks like a fat resistor. There it is, brown, black and gold. Variable capacitor, I've written here 10 to 60 picofarad. It can be a transistor radio type, that would be okay with four watts. Important thing is the trimmers on the back are set to minimum capacitance, that is the least overlap. That's important because when you're adjusting this, you'll find that the right setting will be near the minimum capacitance end. I've written 60 picofarad there. This one's actually higher value because I've got two halves connected in parallel. That's because this antenna, the Wade Tenor DX, I use for other frequencies as well. If you're just interested in 27 megahertz, then use a low value section. These often have one section for 160 picofarad, one for say 60 picofarad. Use that section only. And I suggest not connecting the two sections in parallel because you want the minimum possible minimum capacitance as that's where your tuning range will be. And the antenna, 5.8 metres of wire as a vertical. As I mentioned before, any insulated wire would be okay provided it's not too heavy to collapse the mast. And 5.8 metres, it's probably okay if it's you know 10 or 20 centimetres shorter or longer. Main thing is it's slightly longer than half a wavelength that gives it a high impedance that this L-match coupler can comfortably match and you're a bit less dependent on earth. So I didn't use any earth radial or anything like that. If you don't have a suitable variable capacitor, I'd suggest a length of coax because coax cable has capacitance. Approximately one picofarad per centimetre. So you might want to start with some RG58, maybe 30 centimetres, that will be 30 picofarad. And then with the VSWR meter in line, apply a carrier, do your tests and snip it back until you get low VSWR. You might want to try different lengths, a bit of trial and error. But that is one possibility if you don't have a variable capacitor like that. 
the thing about that is that it will have a higher RF power handling capacity. If you are using, say, a 12 watt SSB CB radio, and I suggest you're likely to have more chance of success if you do compared with AM, then yeah, a, a variable capacitor like this might not be all that good for that, it might arc over. But a coaxial cable capacitor, though you can't vary it, does give you a bit better power handling capacity. As far as the inductor, I'd be very wary about using a tiny little one like this for 12 watts PEP. Um, it might work. Even 4 watts of AM, maybe that would tax it. But so far with my tests, this one's been okay. But as a substitute, you could try winding some enameled copper wire, like from the inside of a transformer. If you don't have that even ordinary insulated wire, there are formulas online that you can work out roughly inductance for a particular diameter and number of turns. Turn spacing is also important, but for one microhenry, I'm going to guess maybe five or ten turns. Maybe you could use some wooden doweling, maybe 12, 15, 20 millimeters, so about half to one inch. Um, maybe that would be okay for one microhenry so a bit of trial and error there uh, but it should be possible no matter what even if you don't have these exact parts to be able to make a little L match type unit that you can use with this antenna especially if you want it to be fixed tune and if you set it up so that it's resonant in the middle of the band like say around channel 20 then you should be able to cover the whole band okay without needing to make other adjustments just using a 4 watt AMCB, a realistic TRC418 if you're interested. I've set it to channel 20, which is in the middle of the band. And I've got a little VSWR meter. If we zoom in, I've just set it up so that it's reading 4 watts. and adjust the antenna coupler. First of all, adjust it for maximum noise. This will be quite near the lower capacitance end of the rotation, which with this variable capacitor is almost fully clockwise. Now apply carrier. Now looking at the VSWR, you can see that I get it very close to 1 to 1, about 1.2 to 1. It does move around a little bit, but pretty satisfactory. So I can leave it there and get on air and be reasonably confident that it's okay. The variation you see is because the wind blowing the wire around. All this means is that I can go pedestrian mobile. I don't really need to take the VSWR meter with me. I can just set it up, have this very close to fully clockwise and be reasonably confident that the VSWR will be fine. This is the top, just got a piece of flexible plastic with the top end of the wire tied to it. I don't need any clip, just the tension of that is a firm enough fit. And then inside I have a chopping board and pipe that holds the fishing pole. It's about a 5.4, 5.5 metre fishing pole and that is what forms the antenna's mast. By the way, if you want to do pedestrian mobile with a CB, as the antenna sockets are on the back, make sure you get one of these elbow joiners. That will make life much, much easier. To that is attached a short length of RG58 coax, which goes to the antenna coupler. A problem with 27 MHz AM, unlike SSB, is that 
almost no one locally uses it. So if I'm going to do a test with this antenna, I'll have to set up my own receiving setup and recording system. Luckily I've got another 27 meg AM radio, so I'm fine with the equipment. But as for the recording, I need some form of voice activated recording program. I picked Audacity and the website for that is audacityteam.org so I can have the laptop with Audacity sitting right next to the CB receiver and whenever the voice comes up then it records. This is the receiving station I'll just do a speaker to microphone coupling. No fancy cables. Just doing a scan of the channels. I've got an outside G5RV connected. A fairly noisy location. And as you can hear, absolutely no activity on 27 megahertz. So that's why if you're using 27 meg AM, you're pretty much talking to yourself. But that's fine for the test that we're going to do today. This is the first test from home. This is the first test from home. So yeah, it's working. How does this work in practice? To find out, I'll do a range test. CB, battery, antenna coupler in here. Antenna supported in the backpack here. This is the first transmission, the first transmission, about 800 metres distant, about 800 metres distant, about 800 metres distant walking on the deck. The first transmission, the first transmission, about 800 metres distant. This I should mention that my home is that way, so not an overwater path, but later on when I get further away, some of the path will be over water. Now I'm walking in the water, walking in the water, so there's water underneath me. Note that I'm just using the wire in fed. I don't have anything around my ankle, I'm just relying on the CB battery and wires to be the counterpoise, which I'm hoping is okay because I'm using a half wave vertical antenna more or less. Anyway, that was transmission number three, uh, standing in the water. This is test number four, test number four, standing on the end of a pier, standing on the end of a pier, test number four. Test number five, test number five, test number five, one kilometre, one kilometre, one kilometre, test number five. Test number six, test number six, 1.2 kilometres, 1.2 kilometres, pedestrian mobile standing in the water, standing in the water, standing in the water, 1.2 kilometres. Test number 6A, just uh, out of the water, just on sand, just on sand, just on sand. Um, this is test 6A, about 1.2 kilometre deal um, on the sand, on the sand. This is test 6B, 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 at the end of resident 3, at the end of resident 3, 6B, about 1.2 kilometres. This is test number 7, test number 7, 1.4 kilometres, 1.4 kilometres, just walking along the sand, test number 7, test number 7, 1.4 kilometres. Test number 8, test number 8, 1.6 kilometres, 1.6 kilometres, test number 8, test number 8. 1.6 kilometres, test number 8. Uh, we'll just uh, walk onto the sand before us in the water. Um, this is, test, we'll call this test number 8A on dry sand. Dry sand, test number 8A, about 1.6 kilometres. Test number 8A, about 1.6 kilometres. Test number 8B, test number 8B, test number 8B off the sand and walking inland. Test number 8B, off the sand, walking in land. Uh, I've uh, a couple of carry bites that were uh, nearly ready. 
Take a look at a simple 27 meg vertical antenna you can put on your backpack and go pedestrian mobile. Don't forget if you do build it then let me know how you go and the range you got in the comments. Every successful QRP outing needs a good antenna. To get some ideas check out my books hand carried QRP antennas and more hand carried QRP antennas. For more information visit my website vk3ye.com or search their titles on Amazon.